Hey guys, it's Mike and I'm back and today we're going to talk about the Federal Reserve Bank. We're going to talk about fractional reserve lending and why you should own cryptos, gold and silver. So let's get started guys. Let me get to go ahead and drop the mug. There you go. You don't have to look at me no more. And now you get to look at the website for the Federal Reserve Bank. I love how it says up here, www.federalreserve.gov. They're basically trying to trick you into thinking that they are a government entity when they are not. This is a private bank owned by shareholders. And this bank pays dividends out to these shareholders, which I'm assuming, and you really we can't prove it, are other banks more than likely their member banks so if you actually go to their website and you sift through all the nonsense you can f most likely figure out who these member banks are but without even looking through that i can just name a few bank of america wells fargo jp morgan these are for sure some of the member banks now the federal reserve what they do is they print money for our government for the federal government they print this money and they loan it to the federal government and the government has to pay back that money that they've printed plus interest. This on its own inherently is an issue because the Constitution states that money has to be controlled and printed by the government, not by private entities. At this point, this is basically counterfeiting. In essence, it really is. Legally, it's counterfeiting. Now, the Federal Reserve was given the power to do this in 19, between 1912 and 1913. And in 1914, the IRS came into being, which is basically the strong arm for the Federal Reserve to make sure that the rest of us pay our extortion. Our, and by extortion, I mean income taxes, property taxes, sales taxes, sin taxes, all these amazing taxes. But when you really think about it, we pay a whole lot of taxes now, and this country was basically created because of a 2% tax on tea. Go figure. Now that you have a little bit of a background on the Federal Reserve, we're going to talk about fractional reserve lending. So once the Federal Reserve has given money to the federal government, the federal government pays its employees. Its employees go ahead and spend money in the economy, buying cars, houses, services, yada, 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 and then the rest of us have jobs. Now, these government employees are going to spend some of their money, and they're going to put some of their money in the bank. We are also going to spend this money and put some of this money in the bank. Once the bank gets a hold of it, this is when the new criminality begins, a whole different style of criminality. It's called fractional reserve lending. So basically, this is all on a percentage where they can keep, you, I can give them 10 bucks and they keep $1, so 10% of that in the bank and the other 90% gets it loaned out to people. You would think, you know, this isn't too big of an issue as long as my money is there, let the banks do what they want, but this is an issue. Why? Because this creates a problem. The problem would be called a sum of an infinite series. This means that this can go on forever to infinite, infinity, and it does not stop. The Federal Reserve was created to be able to control inflation and deflation by either printing money into the system or taking money out of the system using interest rates. This is how they control the economy in order to get target inflation rates of 2%. Now, if you're allowing banks to just create money, that kind of causes an issue because that would create runaway inflation where prices continue to go up, 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 and up. And the money is worth less, 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 and less. Yet the Federal Reserve is supposed to stop this. So ponder on that for a few minutes. I'll give you two seconds. All right, two seconds are up. Now, the, Fed, the banks do this. And this probably wouldn't be an issue if every bank did the right thing and it was only 10%. And then at some point, they would just stop. But they don't stop. They continue going. And there's always going to be bad actors. This is what happened with the AIG situation and all these banks having to be bailed out in 2008 because they were basically taking all this money they were printing up on their own. They're not even the Federal Reserve. And they're just printing up money in essence and gambling it in futures markets. 
gambling it in the 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 real estate market and this caused issues i mean there was so much money out there that people were just getting homes that shouldn't be in one be to begin with they were bad credit risk or they didn't they couldn't afford it you have people working working class people with making like 70 80 grand and buying half a million dollar homes that is unheard of you cannot afford this you cannot service that debt and i'm completely against debt and taxes i'm just it's not because i care that they didn't pay i just care because it ruins everything else now this fractional reserve lending goes constant it's basically it's money printing it's just it's just a constant money print this is digital Technically, in case you guys didn't know, we've been using digital currency since the invention of credit cards. The moment you stopped using cash and started using credit cards, it's basically digi digital currency. It's basically zeros and ones being transferred from one account to another. So it's not that far of a stretch to be like, oh, well, cryptocurrencies are a good idea. So you take all this stuff into account. You take into account that our constitution states that only gold and silver can be money and the government is the one allowed to print money. Yet none of these things are happening. Fiat currency, the USD, is not backed by anything. If you actually come to their website, they will tell you this is backed solely by the faith in the United States government. It's just faith. That's it. Based on faith. The reason why our forefathers wanted us to use gold and silver as money is because you cannot print gold and silver and it's basically a check and balance if you're like me and you believe in small government the only way to keep government small is to control the money because if they're just if you give them a blank check and you let them just print money and spend as much money as they want they're going to continue growing they're going to become more and more complicated they're going to grow 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 and grow and they get to the point like there it is now that you can't stop them and we can't do anything about it it started off as a cute little puppy and we loved our puppy, and our puppy loved us, and it took care of us, and then it became a big old dog, and then it became this wretched, horrid animal that hates us. And why do I say it hates us? Because of everything it does. We get taxed into poverty to be able to pay back a bank who loans money to our government. And yes, they do tax us into poverty. I mean, if you actually look at it, so let's talk about the 2% inflation rate. I don't know if you guys remember me saying this, but there was a, there's a 2% inflation. This is target inflation, okay? So let's talk about $1. Let's say I was to put $1 in a bank. And I did this in 1913. Today is 2017. If you do the mathematics, that 2%, I would have $7 today in the bank. That's if I was receiving the 2%. But since 2% inflation means you're going to lose 2% every single year. So basically prices go up every year by 2%. That same dollar today would be worth about $0.08. Cents, which this is absolutely true. How can I prove this? Very, very simple. Okay. So you had all these people out in California not long ago. They were complaining they wanted $15 minimum wage or fifteen fifty minimum wage. Perfect. All right, let's let's go with that number. Fifteen, fifty. Follow along, guys. This is gonna go quick. So, let's talk about nineteen sixty four. This is twenty seventeen. Don't forget that twenty seventeen. Fifteen dollars an hour. Nineteen sixty four. This was the last year that we had silver in our coinage. Okay, our coins were ninety percent silver at the time. Minimum wage was a dollar twenty five. If I remember correctly. That dollar twenty five was four quarters, four ninety percent silver quarters. If you go to your coin shop today, those five sorry, five quarters, <laughs> my bad, those five quarters are worth fifteen dollars and fifty cents. That's right. Did it hit you? Did you understand what I just said there? We want fifteen dollar minimum wage today in 2017 but in 1964 technically you were making today's equivalent of 1550 a hour as minimum wage why is that because of the two percent inflation remember what i told you if you were to get 
2% back every single year, you would have had $7. But since they take away, you only have $0.08. Cents. So the value of the money has gone down because it's backed by nothing. There's nothing to back it, so it goes down. So money loses buying power. This is where I talk to you guys about why silver is a good investment. But it's also gold itself. Silver and gold have held their value throughout time. And it's not so much that you're going to get rich, but it protects your buying power because you know what? The government and the Federal Reserve are not protecting it for you. If you put money in a bank, cash money in a bank, you are actually losing money every single year. Minimum 2% because that's the target inflation rate, but we all know it's prices go up by more than 2% every single year. So you're losing money. Now, the cryptocurrencies. Let's get to that. The reason I think they're going to be super, super important going forward, and not so much that they're all going to survive all this craziness, all these ups and downs, is because they're going to get us away from this Federal Reserve criminal system where they print our money, tax it away from us, and inflate it away from us every single year, making us poorer and poorer. They can't control these things. Now, if you don't believe fully in cryptocurrencies or you're just too scared to get involved, then maybe you should just think about, instead of saving money in the bank, save it in precious metals. You do the same thing. You take it out of the system and you take back your sovereignty and you protect your wealth. You cannot protect your wealth in a bank. Today, because of, federal, because of the fractional reserve lending, banks have maybe 3% of the actual money on hand that they have lent out or they have on their books, not so much lent out, but they have on their books. So on their books, they're going to say we have $100, but in reality, they have three. So all it would take is just 3% of us to go into a bank today, 3% of depositors to go into a bank today and say, I want all my money, and we would make the bank insolvent that moment in time. It would be insolvent right then and there. They'd have to close their doors because they don't keep that much cash on hand. And this is an issue because if banks become insolvent, you are going to end up losing your money. Whatever you had in there, whatever fiat you had in there, you're going to lose whatever currency. Because the FDIC only has enough to cover 1% of depositors. And as a depositor, you technically become a creditor to a bank. So as a creditor to a bank, you'll be the last one in line to get paid when the bank closes. And once you've given the bank your money, it's no longer yours. It's theirs. And this is the issue. This is why fractional reserve lending is an issue. This is also why the Federal Reserve is an issue. And just these reasons alone should make you be like, you know what, I need to look into this more. And I suggest you do. There are tons of videos on the internet talking about fractional reserve lending, getting more into detail than I have. Talking about the Federal Reserve, getting far more into detail than I have. And just... Doing the research alone should open up your eyes to why it's important to get your money out of the banks, not to trust the banks. You know that there is something working against you when there are laws on the books stating that you it's actually illegal to hoard money at home. I think anything over $10,000 in your house, it's probably less now, is actually illegal. They'll call you a money launderer. They'll call you a terrorist. Well, that's, that's a new favorite word. Or domestic terrorist. And... They just, they'll take everything from you. This goes into asset forfeiture and all these situations. So guys, do some research. Look into this. I'm not the first person to talk about this. and I'm not even the most eloquent. There are great videos out there talking about these things and trying to explain it and how it actually works. I mean, we are trillions of dollars into debt and we're never going to be able to pay it back. And the reason behind this, and this is the last thing I'm going to explain, is because when the first dollar was printed into existence, it automatically held a debt. It automatically owed more than what was actually printed. Remember we talked about they print it, you owe them face value plus interest. So if they print $3, we owe an, an interest, let's say interest of a dollar, we owe them $4. Okay, so how the hell do we pay that back? Easy. We pay it back by asking for another loan. So now I'm going to ask for $6 so I can, well, I'm actually, I have to ask him for more. So I'm going to ask him for nine so I can pay them back their four and stay with five. And then from there, I'm going to ask for 12 so I can give them their six and stay with six. 
and it goes for so on and so on and, for, and so forth, and it continues and it just stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks. If I was to go today, at this moment in time, all of us just went and took all the, the cash that we can find, all the fiat, and paid the debt, to put it all and gave it all to the Federal Reserve and go, here you go, we're done, we're paying you. They're going to hand us another bill and say, you still owe us money. And then we're going to look at them and be like, but there is no more cash in existence. And they're going to say, well, I guess you're going to need another loan. And then it continues to go forward. So guys, get out of this system. Protect yourself. Get into cryptos. But do your research first before you do that. Buy gold and silver. Protect yourself. And stay out of the stuff system. Just stay out of the system. I was waiting for you to say it. I'm so glad you said it with me. So, guys, if you like the video, subscribe, like, and leave comments. If you didn't like the video, dislike and leave comments. Tell me why you didn't like it. And we'll go from there. Thanks, guys, for listening. And I'm out.